I needed to go after Amon Get, the butcher of Plashuf, to bring him to justice. My name is Joseph Lefkovich. This is the moment I decided to hand down Nazis. I was in a park with a friend and we saw the tanks rolling in. All of a sudden, the tank stopped on the road. We went up and I went close to the tank and we said hello and he said hello. We couldn't foresee anything in the, whatever is going to happen in the future. Soon we have seen SS men, not regular soldiers or even policemen. We have seen the Gestapo in leather clothing, leather coats. I was a young boy, I didn't really, I was 13 years old. I didn't know what they want, I didn't understand what they mean. The atmosphere around was tense, was tight. And then it started the harassment, pushing down the Jews from the sidewalk, cutting a half a beard. We had to close up and leave. In the afternoon, they put us on trains. They took us to another town. We were about, about 80,000 Jews. Then everybody up, line up. So there were many, many lines. And the head of the line, there was one assessment with a whip, whip, and he had two assessments in both sides. And all he did, the middle assessment did like this. Wherever he pointed you, he had to go. My father, myself, they showed to the left. My mother and my sibling, to the right. Never in my wildest dream did I figure out that that is the last time I see them. May 5, 1945, I was liberated from concentration camp Ebenze. And the morning was not a regular morning. The siren didn't ring, so we didn't get up. All of a sudden, the siren rang, and there comes the commandant. He jumps up, up on the stage and said, we want to protect you from the enemies. We want you all to go into the tunnels, tunnels we have built for years. There was a rumor in the camp that the tunnels were mined. They wanted us to go in there and to blow us up, to kill us. Our answer was nine, nine. We heard a few shots, ta -ta -ta. and after a few minutes, I lift my head, I look at the stage, the stage is empty. Looked around, well, I don't see a, no, no, no more any German, no SS, nothing. All of a sudden we see coming in a German soldier, not from the SS, a regular Wehrmacht soldier, an old man. Hi, what are you doing here? I said, walking. Who asked you to walk? My superior. Tell me, are the wires electrified? No. The inner wires were always electrified and the outer wires were not. He touched it. The minute he touched it, my friend took two rocks, two stones, and break the wires and twisted them around and made a... And we went through the, through the wires. I was for a year busy in Poland salvaging, saving Jewish children. After that year, I went back to Bad Ischl. I became a policeman. That was the time that I knew and I made up my mind that I becoming a Nazi hunter. I approached the high command of the occupation of Germany 
and the American authorities called at the time Central Intelligent Detachment. And I said, I want to become agent of yours and try to find those Nazis. They gave me a paper document, they gave me a uniform, and we started to look for, for them. And we did a lot of interrogation. I needed to go after Amon Get, the butcher of Plashuf, to bring him to justice. The idea came to me to go and look about the prisoners of war, the regular soldiers interrogating their officers and their generals. Do you know anyone that is not from your company, from your division, from your battalion? For, no, they're all our people. Until one, said, there is one, somebody uh, that we don't know him. He's with us for a while, but we don't know him. Where is he? At the other corner there. They went to that place there. And I see someone lying there like a dog on the, on the ground. I approached him, my blood was boiling in me. What do I do? This is the big murderer, what do I do? I said, you dog, get out! I gave him a few kicks on the floor. I called him all the names he used to call us. He didn't open his mouth. I didn't stop beating him. And I got very much reprimanded from the authorities for beating him. That was about the end of my, of my career with that uh, the, the intelligence service. I told them this is a big murderer. We have to watch him. Took a little cell, put him in there and locked him up. And then I came a few times and talking to him nicely. Amon, tell me, why did you do that? Who asked you to do that? I forced myself to speak gently and nicely to him. Do you know why I do that, why I did that? I wanted to see if there was any remorse on that criminal, but I didn't see anything. He knew that he deserves a terrible death. He was a, a beast, a murderer. That was his name, the Butcher of Plashev. I wanted to forget the past, start a normal life, find the right little girl, get married, build a nice Jewish home, have children because we lost our Jewish children and I would like to rebuild. I had the statue and I didn't like it. I, people ask always what it is after the war. People didn't know what it is. I had to explain. I went to a swimming pool. I went to what? Uh, the summertime around with what is it? What is it? I didn't like to have a number. Uh, so I went and um, made plastic surgery, took a doctor, cost me a lot of money, removed it. I regret. I wanted to get away from it, especially when I built it, my family. I didn't want my children to know about it. My children started to grow up. They bothered me, Daddy, Daddy, tell the story. We need to know the story. A rabbi, Naftali Schiff, he went after me and insisted I should tell the story. And he was the one that really moved me to start talking. I always say that life has a lot what to offer. Do good, help people, teach people, tell the story that happened. It should never be forgotten. We have a lot of anti-Semitism. There's a lot of deniers of the Holocaust. Mother used to take to tell us how it, to children, I always said, she always said to ask, Dear children, when you're nice and when you're gentle and when you're fine and when you're good, you'll never lose in festivities, or at weddings, or at bar mitzvahs, or any happy occasion. We will always take a little shot glass, or wine, or a little liquor. 
and we will drink l'chaim, that means to life. We value life. Life has so much to offer. L'chaim. Thank you for watching. You can get my book, The Survivor, just push the link below.